when you were making records back in the 70s, the beginning of your career, typically when you make a studio album, how long would it take? Um, probably six weeks. Okay. So uh, two weeks to track, two weeks to overdub, and then two weeks to mix. And how, how involved were you as far as in the, in the mixing stage, for example, things like that? Right there. Always, right? <laughs> turn that up, turn that down. Yeah, yeah. No, um, see, um, with uh, Humble Pie, um, we started off using Andy Johns, mm -hmm. engineer. Then we graduated to, um, to his older brother, Glenn Johns, uh -huh. at Olympic. And then um, we would... Um, then I would... Oh, then... The, the assistant to Glenn Johns was Chris Kimsey. Mm -hmm. We were on a flight back from New York to London, and we just bumped into each other and said, oh, man, how you doing? And so he said, well, I'm, I'm looking for my first project as Glenn's pushing me out. He wants me, he says, I'm good enough to be an engineer now. So I said, that's fantastic. I'm doing my first record. Uh, and uh, Glenn wasn't that interested in doing my first record. <laughs> so I said, um, you want it, should we do it together? And he said, absolutely, and that was it. It was just Chris and me, basically, mm -hmm. for the whole of Wind of Change, which is my first solo record. And um, I learned so much from working with Glenn and Andy and Chris. You know, it's I, I said, my very first session um, when I was 14, um, Glenn Johns was the engineer because we were working with Bill Wyman unbelievable. with the Stones. So I kind of started at the top. Didn't realize that right until later on. You know, just thought he was an engineer. No, he's the engineer of of the time. You know, I noticed uh, when I was listening to these records, for example, on the live record, the drums have a natural sound. They didn't sound like '70s bands. No, they had top and bottom heads on them, and they sounded right. like real drums, which which is why they don't sound dated, ever. Just like Zeppelin drums, things like that. When you use the when you actually use the drums, where they sound good acoustically, yes, they always sound contemporary. Whenever I was doing, it seemed like whenever I was doing an album, Led Zeppelin were in Olympic too, and I remember walking through. I think they were doing the ocean, mm -hmm. um, and I just heard that drum sound from um, uh, Headley Grange, or whether it was the other one, the the, the castle, where we um, Clearwell Castle. I think it was Headley Grange, the mansion, and I heard that room sound on the drums, and I said, it sounded like it was backwards or something. The drums <laughs> were it was like hitting the wall, you know, and I'd never heard that before, you know. I said, what's that? And the engineer went, can't tell you. So <laughs> then I worked out what it was. It's this room sound, you know, so. John Simons was a huge Bonzo fan. Mm -hmm. So we put up room mics. Do you ever go back and listen to your old records? Not that often, no. If you come on the radio, do you listen to it? Maybe, or maybe I'll change the channel <laughs> because I'm so much better now. <laughs> No, I mean, it's hard to listen for me because I can hear things that should have been done that weren't done, you know. That still bother you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Never changes, right? It'll never change. No, that's, and that's, I guess my perfectionism is, uh, that's what makes me me, you know. I mean, to somebody else, they would maybe not go that deep into it being correct. But on the other hand... Playing live, it's never perfect. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's perfect in the in the. Um, you're all set up to be perfect, um, but some nights it's good. Some nights it's really good, but it's never perfect, and that's that's why I like it. Okay, so if I said to you, Peter, what song that you've recorded is the best? Where you say, okay, this is, this is really. I can listen to this. I think this is exactly how I imagined it. Oh no, I not one of Never, them. right? No. No. I don't think so. I can always find something that, that I don't like about something I played. 
But that's what makes you better. Mm -hmm. Because you go, well, I'm not going to make that mistake again. I mean, I left it at the time, and it's fine, but... And, you know, sometimes... Um, the, the mistake is good to leave in because you wouldn't have played all the other stuff around it, you know. And, you know, I know it's a mistake. Maybe some people don't think of it as a mistake, but I do. 